Hey everybody, I'm Joe Deganzik and this is Life in the Smarter Home. This is our home automation Q&A episode covering all of the comments and questions that came in last month, September 2016. And speaking of last month, it was a record, it was a huge month for us, the most video views ever, and on a single video, the most views in the shortest amount of time. So if you viewed the iOS 10 and Home and HomeKit video, um, thank you so much. You know, you gave it a thumbs up and so forth. Thank you for all of those views to everyone. And if you're a new subscriber and you're kind of came back to check out what's new with the channel and what's going on, well, welcome aboard. And this is what we do every month is uh, Q&A episodes on uh, separate ones on home automation and LED lighting. They're a little bit longer than most of the other episodes that are kind of like for the YouTube attention span. But in general, the uh, the questions and the times go into the video description so you can skip ahead uh, if you're interested in a certain topic. This month is largely going to try to clear up some of the confusion that some of you had in that particular video um, and others um, relating to all the new stuff that Apple put out in iOS 10, watchOS 3, uh, tvOS 10, even though really they didn't name it tvOS 10, they didn't really it's kind of an internal thing. Anyhow, um, there was a little bit of confusion. Some people were concerned about certain things, so I'm gonna try to clean, clear that up. But the first part, um, I'm gonna go through someone, um, this is kind of the, um, uh, my device isn't doing what I'm supposed to do, what should I do? And I find it funny how people actually come to the channel and to the videos and actually ask me about things as if I'm tech support, which I don't mind, but in general, I may not know the ultimate answer and I may have to refer you to the manufacturer, which sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So um, this was about Philips Hue and I'll get to something else about um, the, uh, the Apple TV as well. Uh, I recently bought Philips Hue. This was from user we, I'm not even gonna try, W-E-Z-E-R-E-I-R-E-83. Anyways, hi Joe, I recently bought Philips Hue, uh, the starter pack, and I find that my lights turn on by themselves. And not related to any routines I've set, I often come home to find them on. Seems to happen at least once a day. Do you know why this is happening and how to stop it? Well, um, and I replied to that person, and uh, suggested something and they tried it and it worked, which was, you know, when in doubt, reset the device. She's talking, uh, she, uh, he or she uh, is talking about Philips Hue, such as um, devices that come with the Philips Hue hub. If I pick up the right bulb here, it'll make sense. Uh, here's a Philips Hue, um, a white only uh, bulb. It just does white uh, light, doesn't change colors or color temperatures. Anyways, so all of these devices, you know, from the bulbs themselves to the bridges um, that power the Zigbee technology that the bulbs talk to uh, the hub with, all of this is cutting edge technology stuff. And all of this is just, you know, it breaks down, it fails, no matter how good the technology is, they still have these little bugs and issues that happen. So number one, unplug it, wait 30 seconds, plug it back in. There's number one. If that doesn't solve it, reset the device. Now, many times resetting it will wipe out your, um, your bulbs that have been joined to it, it could wipe out other settings. So that's kind of a last resort. But if you can't get it to work, like if it's stopped working with HomeKit, or if it's uh, the Philips Hue is actually one of the it's one of the reasons why it is so popular and it's a best-selling lighting system is because it's compatible with just about every other home automation system that's out there on the planet, which is wonderful for people who want to have you know various systems connect to other systems. If it stops talking to your favorite home automation system, a, re, a reboot of the device or a reset of the device uh, may be necessary. And of course, if you have it linked to another home automation system and you have systems or rules or triggers or timers set up that talk to these uh, bulbs, obviously resetting the, um, the hub is kind of a last resort because then you're gonna have to rework all the stuff that's tied to it. But this user, um, I did suggest a full reset at, as a last resort. Um, I think they did a reboot and possibly a reset and it started working again. Um, so like I said, when all else fails, reset the damn thing. Um, there were a number of people who, who um, emailed in or commented about the Apple TV. Um, the new Apple TV, fourth generation, as I stated in, the, in that particular video, 
now supports Siri commands, which the original um, the original release, the rollout last year, did not. And I'm talking about with the with the Siri remote that's got a microphone uh, at the very top of it. Anyhow, um, that all didn't work initially, probably because Apple's servers were like overloaded by everyone upgrading and wanting to get all the latest um, stuff um, going. In Apple's world, of course, their famous line of "it just works." Well, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work. As much as we love all this stuff and want them to want the Apple ecosystem and and other you know ecosystems that are out there to just be perfect. It doesn't always work. Some people have experienced, um, uh, I waited hours, like overnight, for all the Siri stuff to start working after the software upgrade. Other people said their HomeKit stuff never showed up. They couldn't use the Apple TV as a bridge to the outside world so that when you were um, outside of your home and you wanted to control your lights and HomeKit stuff from your iPhone that you could inside your home, the third generation Apple TV and the new, the fourth generation Apple TV can act as that bridge to the outside world so you could check on your stuff when you're outside of your house. Um, but some people have reported that that doesn't work. The Apple TV is a unique device in that most people are not aware that when you're signed into it with your iCloud account that your your favorite apps and your settings and so forth that are on the Apple TV get backed up. So if you have to wipe the device and kind of factory factory reset it, you go into the, the main menu to settings uh, down to system um, and you can reset the whole device that all those settings and your apps and so forth will download back into the device uh, when you sign back into it or sign into a new one with your iCloud account. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, usually uh, just a reset of the device in terms of just a power off. Uh, there is an actual uh, restart command, restart not reset. Usually that will solve it. If that doesn't, you can always try signing out of iCloud uh, and signing back in. And as a worst case scenario, just do an entire um, factory reset on the device. Look, there's like a fly or something. Anyways, they like the studio too. Um, it's another reason to get LED lights because they don't attract as many bugs. But that's a whole other topic for a whole other whole other show that I think we've already discussed. So when in doubt, restart. If that doesn't work, reset. And if I'm talking to geeks and, and computer nerds and people who have been around this stuff for decades, you know this. But to the people who are new, uh, these are all just tiny computers running all of this stuff. And they need to be restarted sometimes. So that's really the answer to that. Um, the next thing is going to be all the HomeKit stuff. I want to stop just briefly for a commercial announcement to say that Smarter Home Life is brought to you by you. You're watching this video right now. You may have watched an ad on YouTube. You may have been to our website, saw some ads there. You may have bought one of our um, bought something on our Amazon store or some other affiliate link that we have. We make a little bit of money on uh, revenue on all of those things, but they don't quite add up to you know keep the lights on every month. So we rely on people, uh, kind people like yourselves, uh, to contribute via Patreon every month. And we have a small but growing community over there. Patreon is a, is a service that connects people like me, creators, to people like you, viewers, who are excited about this kind of content and want to support it directly. And we're going into the holiday season and uh, the giving time of year. So um, our budget, uh, the budget of the show that's you know, powered by um, things like YouTube ads and, and whatnot and Patreon allows for things such as buying all this cool technology that some manufacturers send us, some don't. So sometimes I have to go out and, and buy it just like you do, uh, like the new Google Home uh, device that was just announced a couple days ago or the details of which were released. Uh, Google, Google was not kind enough to send us one, uh, so I'm in line like everyone else. So anyways, just think of us uh, as we go into the holiday season, you can literally make a difference at a dollar a month. And if a whole ton of people did that, uh, we would be doing really, really, really awesome. So patreon.com slash smarter home life. All the details are there and the perks and rewards and stuff like that. And now I will thank you and I'll get off my soapbox. So for the second part of the episode, I'm going to focus on all the comments and questions that generally came in about HomeKit and iOS 10 and the home app. Many of you wrote in and I think probably threw your hands up in the air because Apple released this wonderful new thing called iOS 10. They included the home app and everyone went and, you know, opened up their iPhone and went to the home app and tapped it, opened it up and nothing happened. And you were probably pointing your phone at your lights and your thermostats and other things and saying, why doesn't it work? It should just work, right? I, that's what 
what Apple says, it just works. Well, unfortunately, you need a little bit more technology than just your iPhone to control your home. Although it would be really cool that you could just do it directly. So here is the challenge. And one of the other questions was, do I need special Apple lights? Which I, I thought that was just funny. Apple, Apple doesn't make any lights, but you know, maybe one day. And we only really saw new um, products uh, or products at all that, that were compatible with HomeKit starting to come out last year, last summer. In fact, the first one was by Lutron. Lutron is a lighting company. They have been around for um, a long time. And one of their new products a, a couple of years ago before HomeKit was called the Lutron Casita system. And it was a lower priced, um, more consumer friendly system um, for controlling lights and uh, you know, window shades and you know, cool stuff like that. So they've had this device that enabled their, um, their technology to work with um, your smartphone via an app. And then they released a new version of it that looks basically the same. This is the HomeKit version. So the reason why you need something to obviously talk to your things is number one, your normal stuff like light bulbs are dumb and they don't have any technology in them. The other thing though, the reason why everyone keeps wondering about why do I need these bridges is because companies like Lutron, companies like Insteon, and companies who make like smart light bulbs build those products usually with their own special sauce or their own radio system. So the technology that connects this, which is a Lutron plug-in dimmer, to the base station, you know, the hub, is Lutron's own radio frequency setup, um, their, own, their own RF system, which doesn't talk to Apple's HomeKit or doesn't talk to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth at all. So the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and all the HomeKit stuff is built into this, so that's the basics of it. You've got to have some stuff to control. It's got to be compatible with HomeKit. So that's then the other question. People are like, well, I don't want to buy a starter kit. I don't want to buy a whole hub. And why am I buying all this extra stuff just when I want to you know, control a lamp? Let me give you another option. So you've got something you want to control, a thing or a light or whatever, and you just want to turn it on or off. Um, maybe you want to measure its energy usage you don't want to buy a starter kit. You just want to buy one thing. That's you want to start slowly and work from there. Here's a solution. This is from iDevices. This is the switch. It literally, you know, plugs into the wall. You plug something into it. It has a cool little um, kind of nightlight looking light strip on the front of it. You can change the color and the brightness. Pretty cool. It has a manual little on off um, button on the side and it's directly compatible with HomeKit. No hub or bridge needed. Let me repeat that. This works directly with this. So if you want to control something from this, you just need iOS 10 and the home app and, um, and this particular device. There's another company called iHome. They also sell independent um, separate devices like this that are directly compatible with HomeKit. No bridge, no hub, no starter kit required. These guys go for between about $40 and $50, depending on the manufacturer and their features. This one, like I said, does on off only, no dimming of light bulbs, but you can control anything, a light bulb, a fan, don't plug a toaster into it probably, but you could if you, um, it'll pr probably be within the rating uh, of the wattage. I haven't reviewed this guy yet, but I've been using it a little bit and it's pretty cool for what it is. Uh, I'll be reviewing it later this month. So something to look into. All right, scenario three, you want all that stuff. You want the smart lighting and so forth. You want color changing bulbs. You've heard of things like LifeX and Philips Hue and you're like, I'll just buy this and it'll be all good to go, right? Well, it may be and it may not be. LifeX has actually recently stated, um, I should have their bulb in my hand, but I don't. Maybe it'll appear up there or over there. Um, LifeX makes a Philips Hue competitor bulb. It, changes colors, it, change, it does all kinds of tricks, and it's, it's a wonderful bulb. Um, it doesn't need a hub or a bridge either, but right now it's not compatible with HomeKit. They say they're working on HomeKit compatibility. We don't know what that means, if there's going to be a new hub that you have to buy, or they're going to enable all of their existing Wi-Fi based um, smart LED bulbs. We'll find out soon. Not sure when that is. I bet they'll, pro they'll probably make an announcement at CES 2017, which we hopefully will be there to cover uh, the show directly. 
but we'll see <laughs> we'll see what happens in uh, in January with all of these different announcements. So LifeX kind of out right now, which kind of out of the HomeKit system at this point. So what's available? Well, nothing is available that is a separate bulb, a separate like a uh, an LED light bulb that has some smarts in it that you can just buy one at a time and control with your phone. At this point, you have to buy something like the Philips Hue. Uh, if I get the brand right here, uh, not that you can probably see it on the on the video, but anyways, this is the Philips Hue Bridge, which this talks to this, and this has the HomeKit smarts in it that talks to your iPhone, iPod. You, know, you get the picture. So anyhow, um, you can get the Philips Hue. You can get a starter pack for as little as about seventy dollars with two of these white. Uh, LED light bulbs that just dim and brighten and they do it well. I've been testing them and we'll, we'll all have a review coming up soon on this particular bulb. We've already reviewed the Philips Hue system and uh, a couple of their products already and we'll link to that in the video description. So again, it's another bridge, it's another starter kit, but you do get all the fun stuff with Philips Hue um, and color changing or just white or they have all kinds of really cool products, but it does require you to have the bridge and to get some kind of starter kit. They do have a way to get into the Philips Hue system without buying the bridge, but then you can't control it with your iPhone anyway, so it kind of defeats the purpose. But there's multiple options out there, and we'll be talking more about that stuff as we go, go on to the future. I hope that cleared some things up. I hope that was a decent explanation. Um, and obviously, now that's the end of the episode because there's nothing else to talk about. So if you have additional questions on any of these topics or anything else, you can reach me directly at questions at smarterhomelife.com. That's actually the best way for me to, uh, to get your questions because otherwise I've got to filter through all the different comments and whatnot. I generally get back to you within a day or two, sometimes faster. And then the best, most interesting, probably most helpful to most people, um, those questions uh, get answered on shows like this one and we do a show every single month that covers the previous show so let's see we talked all about that stuff I did the speech about the email uh, asked you to join us over on patreon so that's the end of the episode otherwise I'm Jody Ganzik with my usual line reminding you to make your home a little smarter every single day thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time <laughs>